Hi, I'm David Katz from thepostgame.com, and we're here with Pittsburgh Steeler offensive lineman Kelvin Beecham. Kelvin, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Is this your first Super Bowl week experience? Yes, this is. First time I've ever been in a setting like this, so looking forward to uh, what today has for me. Yeah, so what's your initial reaction when you come into a place like this and you see thousands of media members, some fans running around with jerseys, athletes running around? How do you take that in? Uh, you know, it's, it's a lot better than the game, I, I would expect. Uh, you know, you don't have people screaming at you as, as of yet. But uh, just kind of just enjoying, you know, and seeing the pictures of all the different Super Bowls um, and all the different uh, themes that, that, that have occurred over the past years. And it's, it's a beautiful thing just to be in this area. Great. So Pittsburgh Steelers had a great season. And especially the offensive line had a terrific year. When you look at the stats put up by Le'Veon Bell, pretty extraordinary. What do you attribute that to, pulling the whole offensive line together? You know, I, th I think we really had a lot of chemistry this year. You know, um, we had a, a group of five guys that were able to stay healthy and stay close-knit throughout the entire season. Just a couple guys missed a, a couple games here and there. But for the most part, the core nucleus of guys were um, with us throughout the season. And then, you know, Ben did his thing. You know, Ben is Ben, and when Ben has a chance to stand tall in the pocket, he can really be dangerous. How do you protect for a guy like Ben, who is running all over the place, you don't know where he is, the plays are always extended, how do you keep him clean in a situation where he he's always taking a few more steps? Well, the thing is, is, is the luxury that I have that maybe guys didn't have early in their career is that he's a lot older than he was, you know, about <laughs> seven or eight years ago. So he's not running around as much as he used to. But, Has he uh, slowed down a little bit? A little bit, but I wouldn't say slow down. You know, you don't want to say those things around him. He, he's a he's a great competitor, but uh, blocking for him, you just know you got to hold your block a little longer, uh, a little longer. And you know, if you hold it a little longer, you know he'll find somebody down the field, and that's where those big plays tend to happen. What kind of a difference did Mike Munchak make coming in as your offensive line coach? Uh, he was tremendous. You know, I really think that he just really took my career to a whole nother level. Um, he invested in me, he invested in the players around us. And then the fact that he played the game, so he really understood how to articulate what we were going through at different points in the season. You play in the uh, rugged AFC North, where every city it seems like that you go into has an incredible defense, so you're getting challenged on a weekly basis. Of all those environments, which is the most fierce environment as a visiting team for you to go into? You know, I would say fierce environment, I would probably say the dog pound down in Cleveland. But the loudest has to be Baltimore. Is that right? I would have to say Baltimore. What's it like when you get into M&T Bank Stadium and you hear that crowd? You guys played in prime time, I believe, this year. So how does that whole experience go? I mean, it's crazy loud. Uh, it's loud throughout the game, no matter if they're up or down. Um, and, and playing from behind like we had to, you know, during that primetime game early in the year is rough, man, because it's, it's, like I said, it's loud throughout the game. But it's, it's a great environment. I got my first win as a starter, you know, down there at, uh, uh, at that field. So, you know, I've had some success there, and, and the Steelers have had some success there. But like I said, it's one of the loudest stadiums that we play in all year. Since we're talking about the Ravens, you've got, you know, Elvis, Elvis Dumerville on one side and Terrell Suggs on the other. What's it like trying to block for these guys who are moving around, in addition to Haloti Nada and guys like that coming up the middle? You know, you have to be able to account for all of them. You know, Suggs is who he is, and then the addition of Dumerville a couple of years ago really forced you to be good on both edges. And then you got Haloti Nata in the middle, um, who really takes up three guys. <laughs> so it's, it's it, at times it can be five on five, and, and that's when they really uh, present a lot of problems for a, a lot of different teams because they're all great players. You have Dumerville on one side, Suggs on the other side, and Williams, 98, is starting to come on inside as well. So they really have a, a, a good group of guys, uh, McPhee, Upshaw, they really have a good defense, just especially in that front seven. Yeah. Uh, and Mosley really starting to come on as a rookie. Yeah. You know, they really have a lot of things, good things going on in defense, which, which makes it somewhat difficult to be able to move the ball and be able to do the things that, you know, as an offense we want to do right. on, a, on a week in and week out basis. Who is the toughest player you go up against on a defensive side? You know, I see uh, Terrell Suggs twice a year. You know, I, I respect him, and I think he's one of the, the, the best guys that I've um, had to go against. You know, I, like I said, I do respect him a lot, um, and he's taught me a lot. You know, I was thrown in as a rookie, and that was one of the first guys <laughs> I had to block, and, you know, I've had to block him, like I said, twice a year since then. So um, I've learned a lot from him. I learned that I have to be in my game every single play um, and, and, and realize that, you know, even if I have him beat, he's one of those guys that has a couple counters in his tri in his bag that he can go to to find a way to, to get get his, uh, get himself to the quarterback. So you're getting ready for next year. What does an off-season regimen look like for you as you try to 
both rest your body but also get yourself in shape for the new season? Well, I've already started. You know, I worked out earlier this morning. Um, you know, really getting back to the eating habits, those quality eating habits, um, getting rest. You know, I have a, a baby girl, so that's that can tend to, to fluctuate <laughs> during the week. But for the most part, you know, just get back to the things that are conducive to being successful, resting, eating right, training right, but not being stupid um, as far as training too hard or putting too much load on your back, but just being smart about it. Um, you know, some active rest, you know, with, with some time to relax in, in between there as well. What's your one cheat food when you're going to let yourself go and eat something that you know you shouldn't but you want? What's your one cheat food? You know, the one cheat food that I have, and it only occurs when I go back to my hometown, my grandmother makes these uh, homemade biscuits, okay. and I have a little sugar syrup with them. So if, if I'm going to cheat, I got to go all the way back to Texas, you know, catch a flight, go to Dallas, and then get a rental car and drive all the way down to my hill, hour and a half, two hours to get that cheat meal. So it's a long ways away from me. <laughs> but when I do get it, I enjoy it. Can you cook? I can. I can't cook yep. those biscuits, though. I can cook. You know, I can throw down. You know, um, last time I cooked, you know, I got a wife. She does a lot of the cooking. But last time I cooked, I cooked some uh, some burgers. That was pretty simple. So, you know, this for, you know, kind of get back into the, the, sure. the swing of things, <laughs> you know. And, you know, I added some of my uh, my healthy stuff to the to the mix of the burgers. And I think everybody got a, a little fix and a good cleaning out when I, when I cooked it. So when I cook, it's very healthy. But like I said, my wife does the majority of the cooking. But when I do throw down, you know, it's, it's going to be nice and healthy. So what's a fun fact about you that people don't know but should? Oh, man, a fun fact about me that people don't know but should. Uh, you know, I'm a musician at heart. You know, I, I was, you know, born into a musical family. I've, I've been involved in music all my life, played the drums at church, very involved in that. Uh, but, you know, can, can, can tickle the, the, the ivory every once in a while and, and play the drums. Those are some things that really people don't really know. But people that know who I am really know that. I love music, love getting on those drums and uh, tapping away. Can you sing? Oh, no. Those days are over. <laughs> those days. No rookie, no rookie hazing or anything? You didn't have it to sing in front of the team? We had the rookie, the rookie hazing and the rookie, uh, the rookie show, as we call it. Yeah. But uh, I, was, I was a little bit more of the organizing everybody, putting everybody you know, on, on cue and things of that nature. So I got out of the singing. Leadership qualities at a, at an, a young age. At a nice. Young age. There you go. At a very young age. Kelvin Beecham, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your Super Bowl week. Yes, sir. Thanks, Dave. Take care.